Hello guys and welcome to Python Programming Tutorials by Amulya's Academy. Today in this tutorial we'll write a Python program to take user input for list. While writing the programs in many programs we'll take list as the input. We can take list as the input in two ways. One is you can directly take a list or you can take user input. So today we'll discuss about this how to take user input for list. Now to take the user input for list what we can do is first we can create an empty list like this. Next we need to add the element to the list one right and we need to take that elements from the user. So for that I'll use the input function so I'll take n equal to input function which will allow us to enter the element. So I'll ask the user to enter the element like this and next we need to add this element to list one. For that I'll use append function. So I'll write list one dot append and n. Now one element is added to list one. Next if I want another element in the list then how to do that. Now again I need to take the input function. I need to ask the user to enter the element like this and next I need to append that. Now if I want to insert another element to the list one that is the third element then how to do that. So for that you need to do this again. You need to take the input using input function. Then you need to append that. This is the one way to take the user input for list. But as we can see this is not the best way. Because here you can see you are repeating this line again and again. Now if I want to insert 10 element to the list one. Then I need to repeat these two lines 10 times. So the program will become lengthier and also it won't look good. So instead of repeating the code what we can do is we can use the loop. Whenever in the program if you need to repeat piece of code for different value then you can use loop. And here we have two loop that is for loop and by loop and we can write this program using both the loops. First we'll see how to write this program using for loop and next we'll uh, see how to write the program using while loop also. Instead of repeating this again and again we need to include this in a loop right. So here we'll take for loop. So now if I take for loop to write this program then first I need to know how many elements you want to enter to the list one and that many times we need to run for loop body. So first we need to ask the user to enter how many element he or she want to enter to the list. Next we need to run for loop that many times n times and we need to take the element from the user and we need to append that. So let's write the program. In the python file the first step is we need to ask the user to mention how many elements he want to enter to the list. So for that I'll take a variable n and I'll use input function and here I'll write a message. How many elements or you can mention length of list. You can ask the user to enter the length of list. Now length of list is an integer value right. So here we want integer input so I need to convert the input to integer using int function because here I am using python 3 and in python 3 by default this input function will take input as the string value but here we want integer input that's why I am using int function here. Right the first step is done. Next I need to use the for loop so I will use for i in range. So here i is a variable you can take any suitable variable here and in the range function I need to mention how many times I need to execute the for loop body. Here in the for loop body we are writing the code to take the input from the user. How many times do I need to take the input n times right that's why I need to take range as n here. So next I need to take the input from the user. So enter the element. I'll ask the user to enter the element here and I'll store that in the variable element. Here I'm taking the string input for now. If you want you can take int input by using int function. Next after taking the element from the user we need to store that in the list right. So for that first we need to create an empty list here like this. It is an empty list. Now I need to append the user entered element the user input to list one. So here use like this list one dot append element. 
now elements are entered so here i'll print the list like this so let's execute this first mention the length of list so i'll take five elements here i'll mention one two three four five here you can see list contains string elements because in the input it will take the input as string value by default if you want integer input then you need to convert the input to int like this if you want float you need to convert it to float right in this way you can write this program you can take the user input for list using for loop first you need to ask the user to mention the length of the list how many elements he want in the list then create an empty list then using for loop execute these two line that is here we are taking the element and we are appending that to list one using the for loop execute these two line n times that is nothing but take the user input n times next print the output all right next if i want to do this using while loop then how to do that one way is you can take a variable here i is equal to 0 and you can chuck the i is less than n and uh, you can increment i in the loop body that is the one way but i won't use that way let's write the program without knowing the length of list here in the for loop first we need to know the length of list right then we'll run this code that many times n times and we'll take n input and we'll append that to list one and we'll print the element but if i don't know length of list how many elements i want to insert to the list then how to write this program we can do that using while loop so for that first i'll remove this we don't want this user input instead of here for loop i'll use while loop and in the while loop we need to take the condition which will evaluate to true or false if the condition become true it will execute loop body if the condition become false it will come out of the loop now instead of taking a condition which will evaluate to true or false i'll take this condition itself as a value true that means while loop is always true when this condition when here this becomes true it will execute the loop body right so it won't become false in any time that means this loop is of infinite loop now it will execute the loop body continuously now inside this i'll take a stopping condition for while loop that is i'll ask the user to mention whether he want to quit or not whether he want to add another element or whether he want to stop so here i'll take the input from the user like this want to stop if s press s otherwise press any key i'll ask the user whether he want to stop if yes we need to press s otherwise we need to press any key and here i'll take a if condition and i'll check whether choice is equal to equal to yes whether the user input is yes if it is yes that means he want to quit so i'll execute break statement so when we use break statement inside the loop body when that line is executed when break is executed it will come out of the loop this is the stopping condition for our while loop all right so let's execute this and here you can see i converted the input to int using int function so we are taking integer elements enter the element i'll enter 10 so it will ask after entering one element it will ask want to stop if you press yes it will stop if you press any other key here i'll press enter so it will again ask enter the element i'll enter 20 next again i'll press enter and i'll press 30 so now if i press yes it will stop and it will print the list elements 10 20 30 okay so in this way you can take the user input for list now if i want to insert different type of element to the list then how to do that here you can see you can enter only one type of element to the list because if i convert the input to int then it will take all the integer element and it will insert that to list if i take float here it will take only float input and it will insert that to list 
if I didn't take any function here, then input function by default take the input as string and it will take only string input. For example, if I remove this now like this, here we can see we are using input function. Now if I execute this, enter the element. If I enter 10, this is an integer input, but because we didn't use any function with the input function, it will treat the input as the string value and it will take string input. Then how to solve this issue? If I want to enter different type of element to the list, then how to do that? So for that, you can use eval function, which will evaluate the string as expression. So here you can use eval like this. And if I execute this now, enter the element, I'll enter 10. So I enter A and I'll enter 3.4 and here you can see it will take integer, float and uh, string value. But using the eval function in the program is dangerous because it has some security issues and most of the people avoid using eval in the program then what to use instead of eval function. You can use another function called as literal eval which belongs to AST module. This is a module and in that module there is a function called literal eval which will safely evaluate an expression or string. So for that you need to import AST first like this and here you need to use AST dot literal and eval. The function name is literal eval. Enter the element. If I enter 10, 2.3. And here we can see, right? So in this way, you can insert different types of element to the list. Next, there is an another way also to take the user input for list. That is, uh, first you need to take the string input. You need to ask the user to enter the element with space. For example, if I want to enter uh, A, B, C, D to the list, we need to enter A, space B, space C, space D. Then we need to split the string to one and dot split like this. And if I print list one if i enter a b c d here you can see list so you can take the user input for list using the split function also so that's it for now guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel i will meet you in next class till then take care